Hello, hello. How are we doing today? Good morning, good evening, good afternoon from wherever you are. I'm Nick Bell, your Line 6 product specialist for today. And um, what I thought would be cool to go over today would be the LA Studio Comp here. Let's uh, kind of move this over a little bit so we're centered. Boom. So, um, yeah, so this is a really really good uh, compressor here and what's funny is it's not it, it is a compressor but um you know it it's more of like a frequency compressor when you look at um the actual tele teletronics la2a which this is what it's modeled after um you know it's actually considered a you know what they call a leveling amp and so we're going to see some cool stuff on how we can use this um this is kind of my secret weapon um you know i put it at the end of a lot of my presets um there's even some presets where i put it in front of my amplifier and use it as an overdrive and so it's it it, it doesn't behave like your traditional compressor um you know so we'll take a you know dive into that and just see you know the fun and you know kind of the coolness we can get from the la2a because you know it's in the dynamic it, consider you know and it's called you know the la studio comp so there may be plenty of us here who you know maybe really don't use compressors that often and maybe this has gotten overlooked but um you may find that this is you know your secret weapon and honestly What's really cool about the LA-2A um, studio compressor is that it, it can be used on anything, really everything, vocals, drums, guitar, bass, really anything you want to throw at it. And honestly, the more you throw at it, the more it, it kind of does for you on the frequency side of things. So um, let's just get kind of the uh, awkward bit out of the way. So um, let me know how uh, how levels are. You're listening to me talk right now, but you know, how, uh, how we are on guitar levels. <laughs> So let me know how that sounds and um, you know we'll go from there taking a quick look at who we have in the stream Ross Bailey thank you so much for joining man and a pleasure to have you um, Demonstration <laughs> Scotland evening beautiful morning from Mexico awesome nice man so we have um, some uh, you know some users from a little bit all over today now had some weirdness with uh, my um, with my hub that ex that will accept my Ethernet connection. So if my signal's a little fuzzy or audio is kind of weird, I'm sorry about that. Um, you know, I I did get some faster internet, so hopefully the Wi-Fi is working out well. Um, but if we have any uh, weirdness, just let me know, and I'll do my best to you know kind of you know get that going. So taking a look over at my HX edit, um, you know, I just, you know, wanted to show you, you know, like three flavors um, on how I would use the LA-2A. And we see here, I have a crunchy, a heavy, and an acoustic. So when we look at the LA-2A, and, um, you know, I have uh, this preset ready to go here. When we look at the LA-2A, it's a compressor, but we don't really see a whole lot of that traditional, um, the traditional parameters or settings for a compressor. So what I mean by that is if I just go down here to path 2A, click dynamics, and literally, you know, anything from the deluxe comp, the deluxe comp you know, gives you a lot of control, whereas the red squeeze, um, you know, that MXR, you know, Dynacomp, you know, is really just sensitivity and mix. And so you can see how every compressor essentially is giving you somewhat of the same control, sensitivity, the attack, the release. And for those of us who are familiar with, um, you know, a compressor, you know, we all have our go-to settings. Now, what I love about the deluxe comp is I have my ratio right here. So pretty much, you know, I don't want to go in a whole, you know, kind of a, you know, a lesson on what a compressor is and how it works and such, because I figure, you know, most of us have an idea of what a compressor is. And essentially what a compressor is, is it makes everything within the same volume, right? Your loud stuff and quiet stuff kind of sits, you know, at a baseline, right? And, um, you know, and if, if stuff's a little too quiet, we add some gain, um, you know, and then if that gets a little too loud, we'll drop, you know, we'll, uh, you know, increase the threshold a bit and move the knee around. So when we look at things like uh, ratio, for example, you know, and I have this cool little tidbit right here, pretty much what ratio is going to do is, as we see in this diagram, 
you have your output level and then you have a set threshold and depending on your ratio for example like 2 1 that's a pretty commonly used 2 1 and 3 1 for example if I was sending 10 decibels through as soon as we hit the threshold with a 2 1 ratio I'm actually only going to get 5 decibels out of it and so if you think of the 2 to 1 3 to 1 4 to 1 you just kind of you know do the division there um, you know if I have 4 decibel you know four decibels of increased audio passing through the threshold, you know, I'm only going, it, it, the output level is only going to increase by one. And so that's why you kind of have to play around with your gain and so on and so forth. And once we get into things like threshold, attack and release, you know, that's when things get a little more, um, you know, in the weeds. But as we know, attack, how long is it going to take for the compressor to do its job? Release, how long until the compressor kind of lays back from doing its job? Well, when we look at the LA-2A, we don't have um, those parameters. If anything, we have um, a couple of di you know different things here. Now, when we look at the LA-2A um, Studio Comp, um, you know, looking at this image I just pulled up on the screen, this is actually an icon straight from you know Helix. Essentially, what you see here, other than mix and level, is what you would have on the actual LA-2A Studio compressor. Now. If you want to go down to your local store and you know spend about four thousand dollars for an actual physical unit, or even maybe forty to fifty bucks for you know the modeled unit from UA, um, or just with Helix, you know you essentially have the LA two A, and that's why I was saying you know if you own a Helix, if you're using Helix, you know you can use this compressor to run your your drums through it, your vocals through it, really any instrument you're recording, and you have this piece of you know equipment that's probably been used on almost every recording we can think of um, and so on and so forth so let's kind of just dive in and see you know the different um, you know the different parameters we have here and kind of like what they do for us taking a quick look at the chat see what we got going on uh, from India Bill man we have people from all over today thank you guys so much for joining it's we highly appreciate you um, for Uni on the HX, not really at the context normally line across different presets. Um, Pixel lot, you know, we'll dive into we'll dive into that in a moment. So essentially, here, guys, we're looking at the LA to a Studio Comp. Now, I'm just gonna come down here and bring one up straight, you know, so we can see how you know this compressor looks with the um, you know with the model defaults here, because you may want to move some stuff around. Now, as you know, gain. You know, essentially, we're gonna. That's gonna add gain, you know, to your output signal, and then your peak reduction. As we turn up the peak reduction, think of this almost as like a threshold. So the higher the peak reduction is increased, the more your volume is going to, you know, get tucked in. And then if we move the peak reduction down, then that's when you know your gain and your output will be able to be a little more dynamic. Now. What we were talking about um, ratios um, earlier. Now the LA2A has a fixed ratio of three one, so that's a pretty common uh, ratio for vocals and you know even guitar players. But the LA2A is set at a ratio of three one, so keep that in mind. Now one thing that I think is interesting on the model default here is the emphasis is at point nine. Now. In this little uh, in this little image I have here, you can't you know we don't we we didn't we don't have it because it's a it's a knob essentially. But if you take a moment and take a look at um, a standard LA two A, right under where like the gain is on this image you're looking at, there's actually uh, kind of like a set screw, and supposedly by default that set screw is turned all the way clockwise to maximum, which would be like this. And so what the emphasis does is it's actually um, it, it's actually like a filtering of the side chain. The side chain being your input going into the LA to it. So when it's fully clockwise or with the emphasis turned to maximum, um, it, which is the default position, the side chain signal is unfiltered and all frequencies in the in the signal um, exceed that exceed the compression threshold. Um, it, pretty much what this filtering does is it's going to let all your low and high end frequencies pass through and it's going to compress those frequencies softly and evenly. Now as we turn this emphasis down 
it, it gradually reduces you know, the lower frequency content of the sidechain signal or your input signal. And this results in a compression that is less sensitive to low end frequencies, but more sensitive to high end frequencies. So I don't know how well it'll, it's going to translate, you know, listening, you know, who you may be listening on a phone or a computer, or if you're listening through monitors or what or whatnot, you may be able to hear, you know, hear, you know, these transients better than, um, you know, than someone listening on a phone or a computer. But hey, just bear with me. So moving this around, you can definitely, you know, hear some subtle differences, but overall, it, it just kind of warms up your whole sound. So. Other than that, we have compress, compression and limiting. Now, limiting would essentially be like turning the ratio to like 10, you know, to 10, 1, um, you know, where it's going to, it's just going to limit everything to a certain decibel rating, um, you know, when you're throwing, you know, a lot of frequencies through this. Maybe that may be something that's useful, you know, for maybe a drum, for a drummer or a snare drum, a kick drum, you know, or even the whole drum set. But um, for guitar, for guitar playing, I've never used the limit, you know, the limiter function on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of this uh, little example we have here. And what I have going on right now is I have the LA two A uh, in front of a, uh, you know, uh, the bright uh, plexi bright um, right here, which is essentially just a, you know, uh, a Marshall plexi, just the bright channel. And then I'm going through one of our alert impulse responses and so forth. So what I'm doing right now is I'm using the LA-2A as an overdrive. And one thing that you may notice with other overdrives or distortions is that you kind of lose a little bit of your low end. Now it's, it, that's okay if, you, you know, obviously, you know, if, if we kind of want to tighten up our sound, but if you're looking for something a little different, definitely check out this LA-2A and, you know, let's hear how it sounds, but before then, uh, let's see what we got going on here. Greetings from Australia. Thank you, Marco. I'm being said, I'm also being turned all the way up. Yep. At uh, let's see, I've seen reference on the Link Six Forum being said. Yep, definitely. So what I have going on here, like I said, I'm using the LA Two A as a uh, kind of an overdrive. So this is with it off. Let's see what we have. <laughs> Now let's crank it up. And so what I have here is a, you know, a pretty, you know, beefy sound coming out of this Marshall. And as you can see, you know, I, I don't have the drive set any higher than what, you know, 6.2. So it sounds really, really good. But what I think you know sounds really good using the LA-2A as a overdrive is um, you know kind of in single coil mode, you know going into the neck pick. sound at all and then at any time I can turn the gain up a bit so let's go to like nine and what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the peak reduction and this is going to help me control my volume a bit and then really hear that low end how it's um you know how I didn't lose a lot of low end if anything I have a pretty decent amount of low end and then if we crank up the emphasis to let's say 10 you're going to hear all these for all the frequencies being produced by my guitar and each frequency will be kind of you know equally compressed and so that's the key takeaway here at the LA-2A is it's kind of a frequency compressor <laughs> And then let's turn the emphasis down really low and hear what we have. 
So that's why I was saying it may be a little difficult for you to hear these subtle, you know, to hear these changes, um, you know, on your end going through, you know, you know, going through, uh, you know, streaming on Facebook and YouTube here. But I definitely wanted to show you, you know, how how dynamic you, um, you know, this LA2A is. So let's take a quick look, um, taking a look through everything. Uh, I missed the very beginning of the explanation of the LA-2A. Do you think in general it's better to put before the amp or towards the end of the signal chain? Now, Pixelot, that's a great question. Um, it really depends what you want to get out of it, and it works amazingly in both areas. And I'm going to show you um, after the amp as well. So thank you very much for that. Um, I got a great Van Halen sound using dual cap seven and, and yep, perfect, yep. And what's great about that you bring that up, um, Frank, is that this was actually one of Ed's kind of secret sauce in the studio. Now, you know, Ted Templeman, I believe it was, their uh, producer, he, you know, threw his, his signal through an LA-2A and from the research I've done is they crank the gain up really, really loud, you know, all the way. You know, because when you listen to Eddie's tone, being an Eddie fan myself, it's, you know, for Van Halen 1 and 2, you know, all the way up to even um, 1984, it's almost like a clean, it, like clean distortion, if you will. Like, it's it's distorted, it's really dirty, but you can hear every note and, you know, the woodiness of his guitar. Oh, it's so good um, to get nerded out on that stuff, but good stuff, right? So glad, uh, glad we're final following along. So this is what we get having the LA-2A in front of an amp using it as an overdrive. Let's take a look at what I have here. So essentially what I have is, um, the air apparent going into the placator dirty. Um, one of my, you know, it, this has become one of my favorite amps. <laughs> You know, very, very, uh, very happy. Right, you can do some cool stuff. With it. So I have this pretty, you know, decent sound right now, and um, you know, it's it, it's it has these high end frequencies to it that I'm maybe not the most, you know, happy with. That I could, you know, probably dive in, move some stuff around, get, um, you know, throw in an EQ. But then we throw on this LA two way, and it kind of just warms everything up a bit. If you see my emphasis, it's kind of high at the eight point two, so I'm going to let it kind of evenly you know kind of compress those high and low end frequencies so you know let's see what we get with it off on off. And then back on. So as you can see, I think it makes a pretty big difference. And you know, from what we see, from other users as well, such as Marco here, I almost always put an LA Studio Comp at the very end of the, of the chain with some subtle glue-like compression. Marco couldn't have said it better myself. Um, thank you much on that. Oh, and look at this. Um, speaking of uh, Eddie Van Halen, the 212 Jazz Rivet gives that sizzle that Eddie had. That's a pretty, pretty, you know, pretty good insight there, Frank. Thank you. Um, did not even think to use that. So that's something that I'll have to put in my uh, bag of tricks. What I've always used, and 
I'm in this is a pretty good segue because it looks like we have a question here from Claudio on what is an IR and IR is essentially the most perfect in and a streamlined way to get a model of let's say a cabinet where we can send all sorts of cool frequencies through that cabinet and use something like an SM57 to capture those frequencies and then you end up with the sonic fingerprint of that cabinet with its speaker, the mic used, and anything else that was going on through the board and the mic you were using and then you have this beautiful in one package um, this beautiful cabinet sound. Now you can't change the mics, um, you can't change the distance of the mics, what you get is what you're stuck with. Um, so it, it's a cool way of just, you know, it, it's kind of like, you know, do you want to go out to dinner and have, you know, a professional make your steak for you? Or do you want to use the stock cabs, which is like being at home and, you know, you make that steak for yourself, right? We all love to go out to dinner and have a have all the dirty you know the work done for us so that's essentially what an IR is if uh, you're not familiar or even own an IR go to line6.com forward slash alert and download the free alert pack and um, and there, there you'll have some amazing impulse responses captured um, with the help of the amazing Dan Bull of 65 amps so that's an IR for you and um, essentially you know that's what I'm using today but um, yeah how we were talking about Eddie Van Halen's sound, I just used the Allure um, Greenback, and that really gives me a good sound. So to get back into it, we uh, we left off on talking about the LA Studio Comp, um, or the LA-2A, after this pretty heavy sound. But um, let's see uh, some questions we got here. Um, seem to stuck. <laughs> I added, Ron, why do your demo guys seem stuck on hair metal and laughable spinal tap like rock lift, uh, riffs? That's awesome. Uh, maybe you have uh, some recommendations on what riffs you would like to hear. Um, but yeah, that's great. Thank you for that. Um, so is uh, the gain boosting the input to the compressor or the output? So the gain is um, really the output. So this is a good uh, good question here. The gain is essentially the output, um, and then think of your peak reduction like your threshold. You know, so gain here is working just how you know the sensitivity, um, you know, or output gain would be on any other compressor. And then you know, like I said, the peak reduction would essentially be your threshold, right? And so that's why I was saying this isn't like your standard compressor where you have attack, release, and ratios. Um, you know, it's really a, a frequency thing, if you if you will. If you take a look at the LA-2A, it's actually um, there's actually a photo cell built in, um, and that's where what the emphasis um, really comes into play in the overall you know experience with the LA-2A that photo cell receives, depending on how much light it receives, that's what how the filtering is going to work to allow certain frequencies to pass through. So, um, so that's why I'm saying, you know, it's different compared to the rest of the compressors, mess around with the, put it in the front or the, uh, or at the end of your amp, and it'll be a, uh, you know, it'll be a good sound for you. So let's see, or don't you want the money of people who are interested in, or don't you want the money of people? Oh, all right, Ron. Can't please everybody, um, I guess. So moving on. When will Line 6 solve the impedance issue on PodGo? Not too sure. Wasn't even sure we had one. All right, let's see here. So will, dynamic and, will static and dynamic IRs both work on all Line 6 Helix units? As long as it's a 1024 or 40 or uh, 1024 or 2048, um, you'll be able to load it in. So pros and cons of the new catalyst and using multi effects. All right, all right. What genre do you want them to play? Yeah, um, perfect. All right, sorry guys, just moving through here. Um, Marco, what do we got from you, brother? Um, I also used a few LAs chained after one another and some of you came and got the blunt tone because I've heard it was something something like that. Yeah, definitely. Um, that's the beauty of modeling. You could just keep doing it and doing it and doing it. And then um, Ron, so you know a lot of studio guys went direct through an LED. Really? So yeah, I, I could definitely see, um, you know, with how dynamic it is and the gain and so on and so forth. So thank you for that. That's good to hear. And um, so why not let's put an older, 
So why not more support on older, uh, well, you know, the, the, the support's there. We got some videos and so on and so forth, um, you know, but it, it, we, we got to, you know, we have so much new stuff. We, we do have to focus on what's new as well, even though um, we should have some good videos and stuff like that. Let us know, Glenn, um, you know, what you're looking at and, uh, you know, what, uh, you know, what we can help you out with. So as we've seen and as we've heard, LA-2A, very, very useful. Now, another thing that I found it useful, and again, you know, what I'm showing you here is how I use it. Um, you know, I'm not the holy grail here. I don't, you know, I'm not showing, you know, this is the way or the only way. This is how I use it. And the beauty with modeling and Helix is, you know, you can use these items any way you want as well. There's no right or wrong when it comes to music and art. It's really whatever sounds good to you. And if someone else doesn't like it, they can go kick rocks. So um, without me talking over and over and over, let's take a quick look at what I have here. So pretty simple preset, guys. I'm using a, a Jazz Rivet in parallel to an Acoustic Sim. This is a model of uh, the Boss Acoustic Sim. I'm not, I forget the model number on that, but I'm sure one of you guys know exactly what it is. Brownie points for you if uh, you're able to call that out. And then I'm just going through the LA-2A afterwards, and then um, we're just going into this beautiful dynamic plate reverb, which I love. So essentially what I'm using the LA-2A here isn't for gain. It, obviously it isn't, um, you know, really to control volume, you know, or gain, but it's really just to kind of warm up the sound that we have here. So taking a quick look. <laughs> Um, no, nope, I did not say that to you, Ron. No, not at all. So taking a quick look here, how you could use the LA-2A in an acoustic sense is, like I said, to kind of warm up your sound. So, you know, this is kind of something we have right now. Now let's hear that with the LA-2 way. So it just really kind of warms up that sound. shimmer turned up pretty high. When that shimmer gets turned up, we start to get kind of like this chorus sound. So I'll kind of crank it down. But again, if I were to, you know, turn that dynamic off, we're just, you know, single coil neck or a uh, humbucker neck position. You know, very basic sound, right? But then we turn on this LA two way. And it's not a bad sound at all. And then you have all these, you know, parameters to kind of move around. I could give myself a little more gain, and then I have, you know, more of a louder signal. But I have the emphasis, you know, turned down a bit. So what's happening is that, you know, I'm starting to filter a little more. You know, it's starting to reduce the low end frequencies a bit. But then if I kind of bring the emphasis, you know, up high, more of these frequencies are going to pass through. So sorry for playing the same thing just so we can, you know, get an idea of uh, A, A, A and B here. But you can see there's more frequencies coming out. So that's essentially, you know, it looks like we're at the uh, 30 minute mark here. That's essentially, you know, how I've used the LA-2A. Um, you know, you can use it in many different, uh, you know, many different applications, um, like what we have uh, from, uh, what we have here from Ron, like he was saying, you know, there's many guys who have used LA-2A direct into the console. So thank you, Ron, for that. 
Um, question, I find a compressor, uh, taking a quick look here, I find with a compressor, either at the front or end, always makes a JTV low string always sound light and tinny. I've tried the piezo adjustment, but I can't use the modeling. Oh, well, sorry about that. Um, and Ron, yep, Helix is full of those effects. Thank you, Ron, for keeping me on my feet. Um, thank you for joining today. Um, oh, you know, always a pleasure to have you in our streams and, um, you know, thank you for contributing. Um, but other than that, guys, uh, if you have any more questions, this recording will live where it's at, Facebook, YouTube. So if you have a secondary question or maybe there's a question that's up right now that I didn't get, me or a product specialist uh, didn't get a chance to answer, um, you know, we'll go through and answer those right now. Um, otherwise, if you're just joining, maybe, you know, a couple hours or so later, we'll, we'll make sure to definitely check and then we'll, uh, you know, we'll be um, good to go. Uh, please say something about the Unity gain settings. So the Unity gain, um, I'm, let, let, let me go up to your question here. Um, let's see where it's at. Um, Unity gain, let, I'm trying to find your question here and see if I, do, 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 do. I'm confused about the correct volume knob setting for unity gain on the HX sniper, particularly in the context of normalizing volume across different presets. Um, are you speaking about a... Here, I'll bring this up so we're all on the same page here. Um, here we go. Picks a lot. Don't want to leave you behind, brother. Um, so unity gain, so particular in the context of normalizing volume across different presets, are you referencing uh, the act, you know, on your HX stomp, are you referencing the master volume on your HX stomp? Is this what you're speaking of? Like what is the correct, you know, unity gain for this knob? You know, is that what you're asking there? Because, um, you know, what I recommend when it comes to leveling presets, you know, especially, you know, with the volume on your HX Stomp, your Helix, whatever it may be, you know, the volume knob on your, you know, on your HX Stomp, it could be turned to 10. It could be at 50%. It could be really wherever, you know, you want it. And when you level your presets, that's not going to make it, you know, that's not going to matter where it's at. So pretty much how I've always done it is I've always kept my master volume, um, you know, it's that, you know, the big knob on Helix or just the volume knob on your HX stomp. I've always been a 50% kind of person. Now I've always kind of, uh, you know, I've always kind of explained it like you're either a 50% guy or you're at 100%. Now the guys who are always at 100% for their gain, the guys who are always at 100% with their volume knob tend to be guys who are like more professional, let's say, right? Where you could show up to any st to any stage and you can trust the sound guy. And for many of those people, the, it, it, the sound guy is working for them, so you don't have to worry. But for guys like me and the rest of us, I keep it set at 50%. And then what I'll do there is I will level every preset with this volume knob set to 50%. Now, when you level a preset, first of all, find your cleanest preset that you have in your lot. Um, and if not, create a clean preset and make that your leveling preset. Now, the thing is, what a lot of what a lot of users tend to do is, if you have a you know, let's say bank one of A, B, C, and D, what what these users will do is they'll level presets A and B, and then they'll level presets C to B and then D to C, and then so on and so forth. And then you end up with your your level either going high or going lower, or it's just not really helping. So what you do is you have a leveling preset or you know a leveling tone. And like I said, it could be the cleanest preset you already have. And what you do is you reference every tone to that clean preset. Um, so if it's, if it's 1A, then you will match a to B, and then A to C, A to D, and then go to bank 2A, and then 2A to 1A, 2B to 1A, 2C to 1A, and so on and so forth. Now you have some real cork sniffers out there that like to use a you know a DB reader, you know, because if you're leveling presets for you know 10, 15 minutes, you know, you can get what we call ear fatigue, and you may be thinking it's louder or quiet, but your ears are shot. So 
a decibel reader, a real decibel reader, um, not one on your phone, um, can help you. Um, but you know, I think it's a combination of your of trusting your ears and um, that decibel reader. But that's how we do it. That's how you know. Gosh, when I joined Line Six over ten years ago, um, you know, that's how I was trained. Um, you know, by you know by you know, Line Sixers who are a lot smarter than I am. So, yeah. That's what I would recommend. Um, now, the reason why I recommend 50% is because let's say you get to the stage, you have headroom. You could turn down or you could go louder, um, whatever that may be. And so as long as all your presets are leveled, that volume knob could be at 5% or, or you know, 100% and you're going to have all your presets leveled. It's just a matter of you know the volume that you need to send. So. I hope that helps. I know um, that was listening to me talk a whole bunch, but um, let's see what we got here. Um, real quick, Pixelot, before uh, we get off. A general question, is there a way to post suggestions or which firmware updates certain apps? Of course, that's called um, Line 6, uh, uh, he, uh, the, the, the idea scale, Line 6 idea scale. Go on our website and look for the little light bulb and that's idea scale and it's kind of like facebook in a sense where you can post stuff other people can like it comment on it and um you know in our uh, you know the helix architect uh, eric klein he, you know him and his team and many of us are always on that so if you want marco if you want to post you know recommendations and user feature requests and such check out line six idea scale that's what it's called do a google search um so uh, let's see, Pixel Lot. Um, okay, thanks for the advice. I've tried to use 130 ping for all presets so I can be consistent and set my clean tone. That's totally fine. That's totally good. You know, the volume knob could be wherever you like it to be. Um, there is no right or wrong on that. I just tell, you know, everyone think of your headroom. You know, you may need to be louder or you may need to be quieter depending where you're at, where you're going. So um, I hope that helped. Glad, um, you know, thank you again for, you know, uh, calling me out and waving me down before ending the stream so we can get that locked and loaded. Um, and I've seen you in here a couple times, Pixel Lot, so thank you again. We appreciate you um, very much. So these are great tips. Thanks, Nick. Awesome, man. Well, uh, thank you guys so much. Um, you know, you've all been really, really interactive and that's what makes these, uh, these streams, you know, even more fun. And then Ron Robinson, thank you so much for calling out my 80s riffs. I will make sure to, uh, you know, learn something a little different. It looks like you called out, um, who'd you call out? Mike Lando and Dan Huff. Okay. So uh, maybe next time you tune in, Ron, I'm, I'm not even sure if Ron's still watching, but next time you tune in, Ron, maybe I'll have some new riffs for you. And, um, you know, and I won't have to, you know, take myself out back and, you know, and uh, beat myself. So let's see here, Flux, great job. Hi, do you have tips and compressor on bass player? Um, you know, not so, not so much since I don't play bass. I'm a little, I'm a little lost on that one. But you know, I think uh, I'm sure. You know, we have so many, you know, smart and you know, great people in this chat. I'm sure Adrian, someone could probably give you some, uh, you know, give you, you know, give you some tips with uh, a bass rig. Um, I'm not sure if we've done any Ampeg streams, um, you know, but maybe that's kind of a call out to have, a, you know, our, our uh, Ampeg guys come out here and kind of do this for you. Are there any bass guys in the house right now? Actually, that's probably a good question. Are there any bass players in the house right now that would, you know, be down to see what I'm doing right now, but with bass, you know, and talk about that? Let me know in the chat and we could kind of take that and, um, you know, plan out our next stream or, you know, maybe even add someone to this whole ordeal. So great stuff. Yes, please, bass players. All right. All right, let's see here. I just love, you guys are just, you have all these awesome, you know, tidbits here. It's hard to step away. I have an early V33 tube head that I have heavily modded. Thank you about converting the new gallium transit for output. Will you be building new heads with these? Um, I don't believe so. You know, I'm, you know, I'm honestly not sure, you know, what the future roadmap looks like, but, you know, looking, in the future, you know, if we're everyone is starting to drive an electric car and this and that, you know, I don't think, you know, big, big, huge amps or heads and stuff are going to be, you know, a big ordeal for us guitar players moving forward. Who knows? You know, everything's getting smaller and lighter and, you know, more compact, right? So, um, better have, so let's see here, Frank, before we go here. I have a 212 Power Cap Plus. Is it better to have IRs loaded into the Power Cab or use them through Helix? 
And when are in when they are in the power cab, can you move them in the chain? Great question here, Frank. So, you know, the whole idea with power cab and the ability to store 128 um, impulse responses in there is we designed power cab for any modeler. So if you're a fractal guy, if you're, um, you know, if you're a Kemper guy, you know, you having those impulse responses stored in your power cab makes it very easy for those guys because they could just send a MIDI signal and now they have a completely different IR, right? But for us Helix guys, you know, it really doesn't, A, you know, to answer your question, it does not make a difference having them in your Helix or in your power cab. Now, when they're in your Helix, you can move them anywhere in the signal chain. So that is a plus. When you have them in your power cab, your power cab is your, you know, it's your source of audio. So no, you can't move that around your signal chain. Um, you know, so if you wanted specific effects processed after that cabinet um, in a certain way, then I recommend having the IRs in Helix. Now, you know, what are the, the only con uh, versus pro that I could see having an impulse response in your Helix would be, you know, you're taking up one or two blocks. Now keep in mind, you can only have two IR blocks per path. So, you know, I could have a 1024 on top, you know, and a 1024 below or just 12048. Honestly, I don't hear a difference between the two and I'm sure neither of you do as well. Although I have heard 1024 seem to have a tighter low end for higher gain settings. Um, but to answer your question, Frank, it doesn't matter where they're at. Um, you just have the ability to store them in power cabbing, you know, in case you weren't a Helix user because, you know, Helix is, you know, you know, one of the best, right? You have everything in one area. So taking a look here, love the licks, proof of serious chops and skills, picks a lot. I appreciate it. I'm sure most of you are a heck of a lot better than I am, but I appreciate you sitting around and listening to me flood through. Um, I prefer the two to one. Okay, there we are. So uh, Frank or uh, Adrian, actually, you know, definitely check out, you know, talk with Flux, talk amongst yourselves. And I think there's some good bass stuff going on here. Um, let's see here uh, before we go. Uh, I use the PowerCab 212 as well. Regarding amps via Helix, do you recommend the preamp models or the full amp no cap speaker model? Any pro and cons between these two? Now, when you're using a power cab, you're essentially a, you could either use the power cab as a full range speaker, um, which it's no different than like a PA speaker, except, you know, obviously power cab is made out of a birch ply, which is the same construction as a guitar cabinet. That's why power cab sounds better than your typical two or $300 pro audio speaker. You know, it's like, you know, here we are, you know, with this beautiful tone and we're sending it through a plastic speaker. You know, would you buy a plastic uh, cabinet? I wouldn't. So. That's essentially what it is. Now, if you're using f um, the full range, you know, the flat, you know, voicing, then you're going to want the full amp in the cab. If we're using a speaker model or an impulse response, then use just the amp model. Now, the reason the preamp models are there is essentially for, you know, the main, main reason would be um, for users who are using four cable method where you can send, you know, certain effects like overdrives in the front of the amp and then really whatever else like reverbs and delays into the back of the amp, into the effects loop, which is essentially right after the preamp. So what we can do here is you can actually send a preamp model to the back end of your amp to the power amp in. And essentially what you can do is you can take an amp and then completely replace its preamp. So let's say you had a Mesa Boogie and it's just just a lot of gain, a lot of distortion, depending on what model it is. But you wanted a, you know, a, a basement sound or, a, you know, a really nice JC120 clean. Well, what you can do is you can take the preamp section and then throw it through the um, power amp in or the effects loop of your current amp and essentially you have a new preamp. Um, granted, you're running through the power amp of the amp you're using, but a power amp is essentially, you know, that that's what's powering your speakers. And so it's clean. There's, there's, there's no voicing, there's no color. Don't get me wrong, every, you know, every output transformer has its own coloring and its own character, but that's why you have the option of those preamps. Um, and again, you know, it, it, 
you're, you know, the sky's the limit. You could use a, a preamp as an overdrive if you want. You can do all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, but that's essentially why the preamps are there. So I recommend if you're using a cabinet model or, you know, if you're using a cabinet model with Helix or uh, with your power cab, use a full amp model always. Um, and if you're using cabinet modeling, um, you know, still just use the cab. Um, I would not use the preamp. But like I said in the beginning, if it sounds good to you, I wouldn't worry about it. But other than that, guys, um, I've been talking your ear off uh, for a while now. But again, thank you so much for joining me today. You've been um, you know, very interactive. And like I said, it's always extremely fun um, when we have these kinds of interactions. And as I mentioned at the end of every stream, we do this one-on-one -on -one for free. Um, right now it's called Helix Skype Lessons. We're going to you know, probably rebrand these as like you know, virtual lessons or whatever it may be. But currently they're free. Um, and are they always going to be free? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But right now they are. So take advantage of it. Line6.com forward slash events. Just go on there, sign up, and you'll get contacted by me, Tony Campanovo, um, you know, or another uh, Line 6 product specialist outside the U.S., depending on where you are located. But yeah, if you want what we had today and more one-on-one -on -one for like a half an hour, 45 minutes, sign on up for one of these free um, sessions and we will be more than happy to get you going. Um, thank you guys so much. It's been a lot of fun and um, you know have a great weekend. Be safe out there. Have a good one and uh, we will see you on the next stream. I think we have uh, either Tony or Ross coming up. We'll see what's up. I'm going to leave that lesson slide up for you guys so if you want to copy down that link and check it out uh, feel free to do so. Other than that uh, stay blessed and we will see you guys later. Thank you.